Okay, welcome back to the next part of the video. In the last video, we brought the XR2 over here to the ISS. We completed the rendezvous and docking. So now we are ready to land at KSC to complete the mission. And that will be the full round trip from uh, KSC up to the ISS, out to the moon, from the moon back to the ISS, and then down to KSC. That's what I s set out to do when I started this mission. So let's go ahead now and do everything that we need to do to uh, deorbit and land. So I'm going to switch views. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go over my resources again just to see how things are. So I've got one day and 19 hours of oxygen. That's plenty for for deorbit and landing. We only need maybe two or three hours total for deorbit and landing. Uh, we don't really need much main fuel. Actually, we don't even need any, but we'll go ahead and keep what we've got. What we could do is just use our RCS to complete our deorbit maneuver, but since we have the uh, main fuel, we'll go ahead and use it. And I did top off the APU mainly for the fact that this configuration of the XR2 burns through APU really fast. So normally I, you would, wouldn't need more than like 30% of APU for a deorbit and landing, and that would give you all the hydraulic control you would need for landing, but since I don't know exactly how much time I'm going to need, I went ahead and filled it all the way up. All right, so now let's switch over to the larger view so that we have these bigger MFDs to look at. And I'm gonna start by bringing up base sync just to get an idea of how many orbits around we should go to have the more optimum timing to line up with with the target base. The target base in this case, again, is KSC, Cape Canaveral. Now we could, if we really wanted to, we could undock really at any time. We don't even have to think about it. And we can deorbit and glide through the atmosphere and get lined up with the base. I don't really like to do it that way. It just takes really, really long. So at the, at the loss of time, I would rather use time warp to get closer to an orbit where we're going to have a natural time to pass near the base. And there, reset again, that really drives me nuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one that's only 248 kilometers off from KSC. I think that'll be good enough. If we really wanted to, we could even go forward 16 or 24 orbits and maybe find one that was even closer than that, maybe as low as 100 kilometers, but 248 kilometers is certainly good enough. So I'm just going to start by warping time forward to get over to this orbit. So we're going to go 100, we're going to go to 1000. If we really want to, we can get away with 10,000 in this case, because we can see this, how quickly it's moving, but I'm not gonna get in a rush, because in the earlier videos, I ran into problems a couple of times by getting impatient and going out to 10,000. So we're just gonna learn our lesson and stick with 1,000. And we're almost there already. Once this line gets here to this point, then we're going to be exactly one orbit away from from the time when we're going to pass 248 kilometers from the base. So what I like to do is to undock at that time right now. And that will give me some separation between myself and the ISS. Whereas if I waited till I'm a half orbit away, then I would basically undock and I would be wanting to start my, my, uh, my retrograde burn somewhere near that time and I wouldn't have a lot of separation from the ISS. I actually 
remember recently when the Dragon, uh, SpaceX Dragon, undocked from the ISS, I want to say that they did it three orbits before they were going to do the deorbit burn. I'm pretty sure I'm, remember, I'm remembering that correctly. So if you want to use that, you know, in your own missions as sort of a, uh, a guide, then you might think, well, I'll deorbit, or rather I'll undock when I'm three orbits away from that point. But I'm just doing it here with one orbit. Okay, so we have to turn off external cooling, and there's no hotkey for that, so we have to bring up the 2D cockpit. Using onboard O2. Now we'll control D to undock. Undocking confirmed. Undocking confirmed. And we could uh, use a little bit of RCS to push ourselves in some direction away from the ISS. And instead of going backwards, I'm just going to use a little bit of 8. That'll fire the thrusters from the top, which will sort of push me down like that. And then you don't need a lot. You can see I'm already moving. So if I just 10x, I'll get all the separation that I need. And now I'm going to turn the APU on. Close the nose cone. And we'll 10x to get through that. And there it is. Now I'll turn the APU back off. Come back over to these larger MFDs. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something that I've never actually done before for this particular deorbit. When, when I get over here to the halfway point, normally, normally when you're halfway around, you bring the other side of your orbit down, you know, to uh, whatever, 40 kilometers, 20 kilometers, whatever, somewhere so that you can expect to be in the atmosphere and slow down, you know, do your atmospheric braking before you arrive at the base. <clears throat> I don't want to do it quite like that, though, because if I bring down the orbit that far, then as I'm coming around, I'm going to reach entry interface probably when I'm, you know, like 90 degrees away from the base or something, and it's going to have me glide for a long time. I'll be gliding an extra long time, and it'll take a long time to do the, uh, to complete the atmospheric reentry. And it would be safe to do that, because the longer it takes, sort of the more, the more shallow your angle is, I think I'm saying that right, then the less vertical speed you're going to have, and you're going to, it's going to take longer to slow down, and it's going to be safe where your hull temperature is not going to get as high. But again, that just takes a long time, and I just, I really, really dislike taking forever in a day to do these deorbits and landings. So what I'm going to do instead, when I get to the halfway point, I'm going to do a small retrograde burn. I'm only going to bring my, this side of my orbit down to like 100 kilometers. That way, as I'm coming around, I won't reach entry interface until I'm much further over, you know, maybe even like all the way over to this point. But then when I'm just 4,000 kilometers out, maybe even 3,000 or 2,000, then I'll do a second maneuver to bring the, to bring the orbit down some more, because I will need to have a, a steeper angle in order to get the atmospheric braking. I'll kind of explain what I'm doing as I go, but I just wanted to give a heads up as to my thought process before I get started. Actually, I guess this color is the best for now. Okay, now let's target Cape Canaveral again, even though we should be fine. And I'm going to press mod to turn off that graphic. I don't really need it at the moment. And we're going to land immediately, so we only need one orbit. Now 
now I'm debating, yeah, I, I was debating if I wanted to do anything with the off-plane distance, the off-base distance or not, but I think I will because, let me switch over to direct. Okay, with when you're landing on Earth or on Mars, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of cross range with your gliding. So we could, we could glide easily 248 kilometers. We really don't need to bring this off base distance down. But due to the rapid sort of dangerous styles of flying that I prefer, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and bring this off plane distance closer to zero when we get up to that opportunity here in just 900 seconds. Let's go ahead and warp time forward to that point. We're almost there, so we want to be in the negative position because the plane change indicator tells us negative. Uh, uh, orbit nor orbit anti-normal is what I'm referring to. And we need the full power of the main engines for 12 seconds. So what we would do, what we would really want to do is burn six seconds before we cross the point and then six seconds after so we can balance the burn. But if we use the full power of the main engines, it's going to throw off our, it's going to, it's going to offset. We're not going to be facing anti-normal because the autopilot can't keep up. So instead of using the full power of the main engines, we'll burn about half power, maybe even a quarter. That'll keep us that'll keep us lined up, but that also means we need to start the burn a little sooner. So we'll go ahead and start it now. And I'm just bringing the engines up to maybe about right there should be good. And you can see by only having this much power, we're staying lined up pretty well. And it's not affecting our apoapsis too much. It's going up a little bit. But if we go full power on the main engines, it will actually raise our apoapsis, apoapsis significantly, and we do not want that. And that's pretty good right there. And when I do the retrograde burn here in a moment to lower the orbit, it's going to have some impact on our off-base distance. And if you're able to anticipate which direction that's going to affect, then you could actually, while doing this burn here, to bring your off-base distance down, you could leave it at 10 kilometers on either side, or five kilometers, whatever the case would be. That way, when you do your retrograde burn over here at the halfway point, then your off-plane distance, your off-base distance would get closer to zero instead of farther away. But since I don't know which direction it's going to go, I'm just bringing the off-base distance down as much as I can now. But you'll notice when I get over here and do the do this burn, the retrograde burn to bring the other side of the orbit down, you'll notice this distance is actually probably going to increase. So let's get over to the halfway point now. And we know we're there. We've got a couple of indicators, obviously, when we're straight across, but also when the distance stops counting up and starts counting backwards, then we know we're halfway. And we're getting pretty close to that point, so let's come back to real time and go retrograde. Now the reason this off-base distance is going to be affected by this little bit of retro engine burn that we're doing is because we're changing the speed that we're going to get over to the base. It's not by a big number, but it's enough that this is going to change a little bit. Because currently we're traveling at this velocity, and this distance is based on this number. So as we do a little bit of a retro engine burn here, and there it just changed, we're going to be slowing ourselves down just a little bit. And that little bit is going to be enough to affect how much time it's going to take us to get over to the base. And in that amount of time, the Earth is going to rotate, you know, is going to rotate. So this distance is going to be wrong by, or it's going to be off a little bit. Let's go. Go ahead and warp time forward then. Get all the way over to the halfway point. 
see we're there. And again, I'm looking here at the periapsis, and I want to bring it down, but I don't want to come, come all the way down to 20 kilometers or 40 kilometers for the reason that I explained before, because as I come around, it'll put me at entry interface somewhere over here, and I'll have to glide for a long time, and I don't want to do that. So there's the distance. You can see it's having an effect on our distance. And we could actually turn rotor rate off. Rotation. And we probably pitch a little bit to fix that. Rotation. Translation. Looks like that might be the wrong way. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Generally, you can pitch up or down to do a little bit of correction on that. Yeah, whatever the case. Anyway, you can see what I'm talking about, though, that now we're off by 12, 13 kilometers. But as we glide through the atmosphere, we can correct that a little bit. And I'm just kind of doing a little bit of thinking here about exactly where I want the PEA to be. Just let me think about this for a second. That's 155. And you can see just visually the orbit's coming down, you know, obviously. So we're saying by the time we get over here, we'll be at 155 kilometers. So maybe like over here is entry interface. So that means I can warp time forward all the way over to that point without having to worry about, you know, getting into the atmosphere. Whereas if I bring this all the way down to, you know, the surface or 20 kilometers, then I'm going to be at entry interface way over here, and I'm going to have to glide all the way over there. And I, and I can do that at real, I have to do that in real time. Whereas if I do it this way, I can fast forward time all the way over to where I'm just a few thousand kilometers in front of the base and then I can do a much more aggressive re-entry which will heat the vessel up a lot but it's just much faster I think what I'll do is bring the PEA down to 130 yeah we'll go with that and we may even cross yeah, we'll cross a node again, so if we really want to, we can even fix that last little bit of off-base distance when we cross the node again. In fact, I think we'll do that. It's not really necessary. We will have ample gliding time. Almost uh, shot time forward too far there, as I'm prone to doing. And in this case, we really don't even need to go anti-normal. What we can do instead is just go prograde, and then we can use the up-down translation thrusters for that 27K. Translation. So as soon as we get facing prograde, we'll do that. But we do have to turn prograde off because we'll be fighting the autopilot. Okay, so now we're prograde. Rotation. Gonna kill rotation. And now we'll just translate the difference for the off base. Rotation. Translation. Take a sip of water while it's counting down.
And once I get to 10 kilometers, I'm going to say that's good enough. I'll just glide. I'll use my gliding range to uh, change. To get the last little bit. All right, that's fine. Now I want to just quickly see map MFD. It looks like we're going to be landing at sunrise. Because you can see the day-night terminator right here. It's just crossing KSC right now. So we'll be coming and landing right at sunrise. Okay, now let's bring up base sync again. Now what I'm going to do is just warp time forward until I'm really close to the base. Could probably even go as close as 3,000 kilometers, but I think I'll start I think I'll start my I think I'll go to 3,500, that should be fine. Then what we'll do at that point is we'll use Aero Break MFD to help us determine how much additional retro engine braking we need to do. It's just warping time forward to get to that point. Getting pretty close. Let's go prograde for a moment. Now the retro doors are already open. You can see here an arrow brake we're lined up very well with the base. Rotation. You gotta remember when you get into the atmosphere you really can't use any time warp so the less time I have to spend in the atmosphere the more time warp I can do and I prefer to be in space because I can you know do time warps and stuff and the reason I'm picking this number by the way roughly 3,000 kilometers is because that's usually the number I use when I do my KSC to wide awake run and I'm going much slower than when I do that. And remember, in that run, I'm over 11 kilometers per second, whereas here I'm much slower, so I could get... But you can't get too close, because you got to have time to come down. So we're where we need to be. Let's uh, start our retro, retro engine burn here. Translation. Rotation. And we're just watching this little sliver sort of uh, evaporate, get up closer to the base. That's what we're looking for. When this ends over top of the base, then we know we're we know we have all the braking that we need. This uses more fuel to do it this way, but it takes a whole lot less time. See that little sliver getting up closer to the base? That's what we want. Let me actually kill the engines for a moment. A little heads up. And that'll give us a more accurate picture of exactly how much braking we need. Actually, I probably should have done the braking using the full power of the main engines in retrograde position. 
This is getting me a lot closer than I wanted to be. Translation rotation. Yeah, I should have used the uh, full power of the main engines while being retrograde. This is going to be a very steep re-entry. This is not going to work. We are coming in way too fast. As soon as we hit 58 kilometers, it's going to be like slamming into concrete. Yeah, I needed to do the, uh, I needed to use the main engines to slow down faster so I'd have a more, more time to glide. I don't think that's going to work. We just have way too much vertical speed. I said it's gonna be like hitting concrete when we hit the when we get down to 58 Mark kilometers. 21. The entry check, all systems green. Mark 20. You know, we're slowing down. This might actually work. Yeah. No, we're heating up way too fast. Yep, we're dead. <laughs> okay. I've done that re-entry quite a few times, but I've never done it quite like that before, so that was a learning experience. I have to do it, I have to try something slightly different. Well, that's uh, that's a failure. So we're gonna do this again, obviously. And I will see you in the next video.